cooks and tonight we're making a pot roast just a plain old pot roast and boy is it good the way my mama made it yep hey y'all it's tammy and i'm getting something to warm on my neck so i don't have on an apron it's cold here today and i got a roast and it, it's kind of red and kind of not because <laughs> i've had it a few days but I'm going to make a pot roast out of it. So I have got, this is a, um, it's not a chuck roast. It's my chuck roast recipe that I'm using in my second cookbook. But this is not a chuck roast. It is a bottom rim. So that means it's a tougher cut of meat. So this side I've already put meat tenderizer on. And so I'm going to salt and pepper it. I'm going to use this today. And so I'm just going to salt it pepper it, put a little meat tenderizer. I already put the meat tenderizer on there, on this side, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do to the other side. Now, I cut some of the fat off of the edges of it, and I put it in a skillet uh, to try to get some of the oil off of it to brown this roast in. Bring it up to a heat again before I add my roast, but do you see that oil in there that came off of the edges of the steak? Well, it's a roast, whatever you want to call it. But I just took the edges off the fat part, you know, and I'm rendering them. This one had the most fat, so of course most of it's coming off this piece because it was a nice good size hunk of fat on the side of that roast. And I got a little bit, you know, it didn't have a whole lot of fat on it, but I used what it had. Um, and so now I am going to flip it over. And I'm going to show you how to do the meat tenderizer when you have a cheaper cut of roast like this and make it good. Is buy the meat tenderizer that is unseasoned for one. It makes a difference. I don't like the seasoned kind. And get a good coating on it. So just take your fork and stab some holes in the roast. And let that meat tenderizer get down in there. If you're doing a steak, you can do a steak the same way. A cheaper cut, like a sirloin, and let it sit and marinate in that steak salt, I mean in that tenderizer, and it'll be a nice uh, tender steak instead of if you can't afford the good stuff, okay? Now, I've got that done, so we are going to salt and pepper this side. I'm hungry, so this smells good. I didn't eat breakfast. And I'm gonna use my uh, steak and chop seasoning. And now all I'm gonna do is put some flour on this. Put the onion in there, the celery. So if you've got a piece of meat that's been in the refrigerator a few days and it ain't the prettiest thing in the world, don't think you can't cook it because a lot of people like aged beef. They really do. It's good. Be just the right if you don't have a meat hook, get you one. They're amazing. I don't have to explain it. Just watch me use it, and you'll be like, oh, I want one of those. So we're going to brown this. I'm going to brown both sides. And I am loving my rated knives. Now, a lot of y'all grew up, and your mama had one, and she just had this one for a couple of these. Um, but can I say that they got a whole selection now, and I've got all of their knives, and I love them already. So, I'm going to chop up this onion and put it in here with the roast. We're going to put a piece of celery in here. I've got a piece of beef bouillon. Uh, this is Nor beef bouillon. You can use granules. Now, this bouillon doesn't say it has MSG in it, and they're supposed to list it if it's in there. So a lot of y'all are concerned about that. Not all bullion has it anymore. So you should take a look at it um, on the ingredient list. Uh, we're going to put a little dill seasoning in this. So we're going to put a tablespoon of dill seasoning in here. This is a cheap cut of meat. So when you have a cheap cut of meat, you always, let's flip this. You always, always um, submerge it under water. You don't broil it 
or uh, roast it. I don't have a lot of oil in here, so I'm going to add some. Let's go ahead and scoop these over and uh, try to get... All this is going to go in the pot anyway. But I just wanted those that good flavor in there. And of course the flour and all that will come off while it's cooking and that's fine. It'll just make you uh, have a nice broth in your roast when it's done. Uh, we're going to add a bay leaf to it. I can never get one out of that little hole. I have to open it all the way to get my fat fingers in there. Uh, but we're going to put the roast in here. We're going to cover it with water. And we're going to, going to cook it on a low temperature for about four hours. A medium temperature sucks. Don't turn it up on high or it'll make it tough. One of the best things to know about cooking a roast is slow and low. So we're going to bring it over here. But I like to make a nice, big, rich um, We're going to put all this oil and everything in there. And it's got the good stuff in it. But I like to make a nice, rich uh, broth and make biscuits and serve it with the biscuits. Yummy, yum, with a roast. That's what Mama did. Okay, so we're going to put this onion in there. It's a big one. Chris planted me some onions already. I'm hoping they do good. These, of course, were not planted onions. I got these at the store. All right, so you're going to submerge it in water. Now, this is not braising. The difference in this is that my lid that goes on the top does allow steam to escape so some of the water can escape out of the pot. If you use a brazer, which I use sometimes, it has a lid that does not have a hole in it and it keeps all of the moisture in and it's a different way of cooking. Um, a brazer really is the same way to cook a roast that you do in a, um, what do you call the big thing that you put in the oven with the heavy lid? The, Oh, a Dutch oven? Dutch oven. Yeah. A brazier in a Dutch oven cooks the same way because that Dutch oven has a really heavy top and it has little grooves underneath it and it makes all that moisture drip right back down onto whatever you're making and none of that moisture can escape. So it's almost like boiling and steaming at the same time. It's a different type of cooking, really. But this is going to just be like mom's pot roast on the stove top, okay? Just so I throw, I'm just throwing a few tips in here because I don't always come on and show these steps and uh, explain a few things to those of y'all that don't know. And uh, we're going to bring this to a slow simmer. I'm going to put it on medium. Don't turn it up on high. The last thing you want to do is get this meat really, really hot. Matter of fact, this eye right here is too hot. I can't simmer on this eye. So I will have to move it once it heats up to another part of my stove top, okay? Oh, so we're gonna get these carrots and potatoes in the pot with our roast. Our roast is falling apart done like I wanted it to be. I like to buy carrots like this and not the ones that are little and pre-cut uh, better for roast. They just taste better than me. So, get you a good peeler from the Rada store. Go to my website and uh, throw you something together for supper like me and Chris have. Boy, it's going to be delicious. And I'm going to make some biscuits. So, when we come back and we thicken the roast, we're going to have some biscuits made. I'm just going to make a little bitty batch for me and Chris. I'm not going to make a lot of biscuits. That really worked. Somebody told me that the other day. I don't know if it was in my cookbook that I read it or somebody told me, but it works. All right, so we've skimmed off the oil and you get down towards the bottom, split it in half. All right, so I'm taking a little cornstarch 
and putting it in here. Um, a good couple of tablespoons, a little extra, just throw some in there. I prefer to use cornstarch, but you can use flour and it will do the same thing. But it, ta it does take twice as much flour as it does cornstarch. So I'm going to put enough liquid in here with it. You want the liquid to be good and cold, so I like to use milk. Our roast is laying in there. We're going to transfer it in just a minute to a um, better pot so y'all can see what's going on. But you really need to mix this up. If you don't, it's going to be lumpy. And I mean mix it. You can use a wire whisk if you'd rather. But if you don't mix it good and you put it in your roast, it's going to make your roast look terrible. It's going to look all lumpy. This time it's going to do right. I just know it. Oh, it's hot, ain't it? That's for sure. Now we have a gravy, and that's what you want. And roasts look nice and big and all, but once they cook, you don't really get as much meat as you think you're going to. That's why if you got a big family, you better make a lot of vegetables. <laughs> so you can feed them all. Right, Chris? Mm -hmm. Don't that look good, though? Now, that's how we ate, eat roast here. And now I'm going to put some gravy on the top of it. And that's how we eat it. Like gravy. Does that look good? These are the fresh green beans that I made last week and I didn't put meat in them. I used bouillon and when you use bouillon, then they last longer in the refrigerator for leftovers as well because then you don't have to worry about it having meat in it. So, if you don't put meat in your vegetables, then they last longer in the refrigerator for leftovers because they don't expire as fast as if they would if they had meat in them. Okay, because normally I wouldn't keep anything with meat over seven days. I'll go seven days with it easy if you got it, you know, put up in the refrigerator and it's cold. So we're going to put this roast on the plate. And that's how we eat it, just falling apart done like that. With some vegetables. And since it was good and salty, that's good because our um, vegetables would have absorbed some of that salt as well when we added them to the, our plate. When we added them to the roast, uh, when we added the vegetables to the roast, they would absorb a little bit of salt as well. Now, this is the way I like to eat my biscuit when I'm having roast, is I like to take the gravy and pour it over the biscuit. A lot of people like to do that with potatoes. Well, I like to do it with biscuits. <laughs> oh, that's how we grew up eating it. So one of my favorite things to do, of course, is get a bite of the biscuit first. That's my favorite thing on the plate. With the gravy. Now this is pretty gravy. It's not lumpy. That's a winner winner beef dinner. Y'all have a wonderful night and thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks where we cook like mama did. Bye y'all. Love ya.